I realize that not all of you will have a camera that's capable of shooting RAW. Maybe you shoot on a smartphone, which can actually shoot bracketed with third-party apps. Or maybe you're shooting on a GoPro, and you're not taking advantage of the newer GoPro that has its own GPR or RAW format. It's okay. You can still get good results by merging the files. But I'd like to show you in detail why I recommend choosing RAW files over process files. I'm gonna switch and open these up here so you can see them. And what we have is a nice image with a relatively wide dynamic range. And I can merge those files directly inside of Aurora. However, maybe you're a Lightroom user. And if that's the case, you can use Lightroom to take advantage of perspective correction. So let's do just that. I'm gonna take these images here and send them to my Lightroom library. I'll just drag those into that new Lightroom catalog I was working with earlier, and we'll import those in. Let's select the middle photo here, and go to the Develop module. I'm gonna take Advantage here and do a vertical correction, or perhaps an auto correction, and you can see that that compensated for the shooting angle and some of the perspective issues. We now have nice, clean, vertical lines. Maybe I also want to take advantage of some other options here. We'll go up here to the lens correction, and I'll remove chromatic aberration and apply a lens profile correction, which further compensates for some of the bending at the edges from the wider angle lens and removes the darkening or the vignette effect caused by this particular lens. Now, I don't recommend doing much more to the image. You don't want to over sharpen, and you really don't want to start processing too many other things here. Instead, let Aurora HDR take advantage of that. But I can now select all those images and click the sync button and choose to sync everything. Now, the perspective and lens correction is applied to all images. To get these images to actually stick, I'm gonna to need to export these. So I'll choose File, Export and I'll choose to export to my hard drive from the preset list. This part's fine. I'm gonna to choose to export here to the same folder as the original. I'll put it in a subfolder labeled TIFF and take a look here. We'll leave the files as is, but under file settings, I'm gonna choose TIFF using the wider gamut Profoto RGB and the 16 bits per channel bit depth. You can leave everything else the same if you don't want to change the size. And I would suggest that you do not sharpen at this point. Now, click the export button and generate those new TIFF files. You can track the progress up above. And there they are. Now, those files can easily get handed off into Aurora HDR. And in this case, since I didn't have a wide dynamic range and I easily covered it by bracketing, I don't need to worry about the benefits of raw recovery but I was able to take advantage of some of the adjustments that I like inside of Lightroom, such as the upright adjustment for fixing these vertical lines. I'll choose alignment here for safety and create HDR. Now those files are merged together and combined. And you see the new HDR file opens. If we compare the before and after, you see that a great amount of detail and color is restored in the HDR version. You might think that I'm changing my mind here, I thought you said to shoot raw. Well, it depends. I still say shoot raw, but what you give to Aurora HDR is ultimately up to you. There are definite benefits of giving it a raw file. Aurora has more information to work with, but if you're already using a catalog tool to organize your images, whether that's going to be Luminar or Lightroom or Adobe Bridge or something else, well, that's fine too. You can do any basic adjustments that you want there. Just don't overdo it. Lightly process those raw files and create high quality TIFFs. My recommendation is 16 bits per channel and preferably the Pro Photo space or the Adobe RGB color space. Then those can be easily merged. Now, if you've got a scene with really tough dynamic range, take advantage of those raw files and send them in. You will have some additional options and it's ultimately up to you. Some folks prefer a single app solution and Aurora is ready to do that reading in the raw files and giving you some great advantages. However, if you've already processed the raw files, crop them or applied other adjustments that you want, 
Just make sure that those adjustments are in sync across the entire bracketed set, and then export those high-quality TIFF files at 16 bits per channel and bring those into Aurora HDR.